Many thanks for staying with us here watching Daybreak on this 9th day of September 2022. We continue discussing uh, matters to do with Parliament uh, hours uh, or just a day after uh, MPs elect were sworn into office together with senators as well and the election of the speakers and deputy speakers of both houses. Um, we're also monitoring the situation in the UK even as... Uh, uh, the kingdom continues to mourn and, of course, the world to, to mourn, celebrate and also discuss the legacy of Queen Elizabeth II. And I'll be giving you more updates on that even as we get them. But for now, we have some feedback to our discussion that we've been holding here in studio. Let's put them up. Uh, 2242 is the SMS line and the hashtag is Daybreak. OK, um, <laughs> Shaw Rice or Ho Rice, I think is the name, yeah. says that uh, Kalonzo Musioka withdrew his candidature from the Speaker Senate race after we realized that some members in our coalition shifted to Kenya Kwanzaa. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Mm. Uh, Athanas Mavuti, you say the 12th parliament performed dismally because most MPs were serving their masters. Laws were passed based on what the handshake government wanted. I hope this time around they'll pass laws which benefit citizens. Athanas Mavuti. Inomo, you say today marks one month uh, since we had general elections. We're already assured of one unforced by election. How many more will we have? What are the cost implications? Okay, that I think is alluding to the Moses oh. Matangula, now the speaker and the Bungoma senatorial seat. <laughs> Kinyo Muchoko, you say in the heat of the election campaign, you had people telling stories, sharing their experience. No doubt some touched you and made you think. Give them better scrutiny, legislation debates, check and approve budget and taxes. I think that's a challenge to uh, uh, incoming parliamentarians. Uh, Kiprono Abraham, one, you say our society should be educated to understand the role of parliament, not to expect them to do development, but to legislate, oversight, and represent. Okay, and keep sending in your feedback. 22422 is the SMS line, and uh, the hashtag is daybreak this uh, morning. Any feedback to some of those messages? Uh, Martha Angara, I saw you nodding your head. Yes, because uh, I, we were just talking when we were, uh, uh, you know, during the break, because we are in agreement. First of all, the expectations, even on this, our government, this time of Kenya Kwanzaa, we have no choice but perform, because we have a populace that is very aware of the things that we spoke. And that is what the president-elect was talking about, that people actually texting you and asking you, what did you say about the Hustlers Fund? Not knowing it will have to, even if you are to implement it, it will have come to parliament to get regulations <laughs> and framework for implementation. So it is a process that we must fast track, because that is what you're seeing there, that people are expecting that we hit the ground running to be able to deliver on these promises. So it will be a busy term. But I think the expectations of the parliament is also very high. Uh, we just what we spoke about, the state capture, uh, running for the executive, I think it's just the role and members understanding the role and the powers that parliament holds and doing right by it. Okay. Honorable Mbui, any feedback to any of those uh, um, SMSs? Even as I see on uh, page 12 of the Daily Nation, uh, a list of possible poll losers who could be headed to court who've already tabled yeah. their intention to do so and how difficult that then becomes for the the leader who was uh, sworn in yesterday because they are sort of working looking forward but also looking backwards as they're not quite sure how it could play out in the courts yeah um I'll respond to some of these SMSs. Uh, one who talked about the things that we had during the campaign trail and of course it is true we had a lot of horror stories, a lot of problems that people brought to us. And uh, all, all elected leaders uh, in, their, in their forums must have heard these things. So maybe, maybe, maybe I just want to give assurance that uh, as a parliament we'll try and uh, see if we can sort out the issues that uh, people talk to us about. Uh, of course we'll do our role, the executive has its role also to play. And our role clearly is not to do the development like somebody also has said but to make sure that we provide laws that create a conducive environment for the development to take place and for business to thrive. So we will do what we can. Uh, on that other matter you've raised that is in the paper of petitions, I, I think uh, it's a constitutional right for anyone who feels aggrieved to go to court and, uh, and, 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 and complain about uh, and maybe, 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 maybe raise concern if they feel that they were rigged out. But we know it is so many years after independence, and uh, it, it, it pains me 
when when you realize that uh, every election is marred with a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of irregularities and at the end of it all a lot of cases end up going to court the numbers are reducing but i mean even at the presidential level we've had uh, you know we've had uh, cases being taken on 2013 in 2017 2022 I think we need to reach a point where that doesn't happen all the time. I mean, there are countries that do elections, and when the elections, uh, when the, the ink dries from the signature of the returning officer, people shake hands and life goes on. We need to reach that point. Because some of the people that uh, are raising uh, petitions are frivolous, but they're also those that have genuine cases. Because, I mean, there are places where really rampant uh, corruption, I mean, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and rigging took place. So we need to, we need to streamline the, the electoral system. We have come from very far. I mean, I, I remember my grandfather vied for member of parliament one time, and uh, when you, when, w w one of the things that came out is that uh, they would open the ballot box, and uh, when they open it, they find uh, the votes cast in favor of his opponent uh, tied with a band. You know, like the way money, in a word of 100,000, they you tie it. Tied with, and, and, they, and, and someone asked, how did they get in here when they are tied like that? And they are told, your work is to count the votes that come from the ballot. You know, your work is not to, is, you don't to ask query. questions. <laughs> you know, that time it was a provincial administration that was running our elections. So um, I think we've gone a long way, but we have uh, very little work left to do, but we must do it. We must ensure that uh, our electoral laws are, are su in such a way that uh, when, when elections are over, people can move on and do other things. Because there's always a winner and there will be a loser. One of the interesting things that I notice as I look at uh, papers this morning and, 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 and uh, reflect on what you're talking about, one of the things that the president-elect had urged uh, governors and, uh, and others not to do is not to use expensive newspaper adverts <laughs> yes. sending congratulatory messages. Um, so I haven't seen any from governors themselves, but I'm seeing a couple this morning. What sort of message do you think the president-elect, Martha Ongari, is trying to, to send out? And some, some of these uh, congratulatory uh, adverts or messages are full pages yes. in uh, leading dailies. I think, uh, of course, what I see and what I think the president-elect was referring to is especially for government agencies. Because after a declaration, you see the following day that every county wants to put an advert, half page, full page. But what, when I look at it today, there's a lot of private business people that have actually put the congratulations, which you cannot really limit them on how to do it because no public resources. And it also keeps you guys in the media in markets because it's also a business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a catch-22. You cannot really say, don't do business with media because you also employ people who are also Kenyans. So it's a catch-22 in terms of uh, 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 use of resources. But I think the issue is the public resources because he's like, you can just send a tweet. I mean, I will see it. You know, <laughs> we're in an era where you can just text him. <laughs> and tell him congratulations. And I think that is exactly what we are looking at, even for efficiency and for government agencies, that you have prudent use of resources mm. that have an output that affects the populace and the masses. So I think today, I see a lot of private businesses that uh, have done it, so it's not so much in the pu public sector. And I hope he was sending a message that please use your money properly in the right way, not just for show or to be in the newspapers for the sake of it. Use it for the right purpose. How much pressure um, do you think the president-elect and the pressure of expectations is under between now and Tuesday yeah. and then now after Tuesday when you know, he has full powers to sort of move with his agenda? I think uh, he's pretty settled right now because, I mean, it's, it's already going, going on. And I think the biggest task is behind him. You know, even as a president-elect, because the big, okay, one of the biggest tasks. Someone said the bigger task being, is of course is ahead United. in terms of delivery, and that's what I yes. say. We have no choice. In fact, as Kenya Kwanzaa government, we have no choice. He has no choice but to deliver because people have quite high expectations of what they they expect to come from this government and to, from this uh, this dispensation. So the election is already done. It went to court, and I think just to talk about that, I would say even our judiciary has become of age. We have actually regulated in terms of uh, the number of days we wait. Nowadays, it's more efficient. It is faster. Even these election petitions, because you cannot tell someone, and I think that is what a mature democracy is. If you feel you are grieved, there is a recourse. You don't just uh, go to the streets. Nowadays, go to court. We have waited. 14 days are over. It has been ruled. So I think it's already ball on the rolling. It's already rolling. So I think between now and Tuesday is really 
easy. It's just waiting to be sworn in. But after that, then the work begins. And I think for me, the biggest regret is that um, so far, so many countries have sent their congratulation messages, um, you know, to the president-elect by name. And our own president has not done it. It is quite unfortunate. I hope even today, maybe at the farewell, that you would get the time to actually just send a, a congratulation message the way Kibaki did to him. I think it will be the democratic thing to do because Kenyans have spoken. We have gone through the process of the petition, it has come out the same way. I think many have spoken, and I think as a statesman, and as he should be, he should be able to be magnanimous enough. And really, I think um, if you saw, transitions are never easy, Wahiga. And that's why you saw even in the US, uh, Trump didn't even attend the handover. But I I'm saying for this case, I mean, we have been very loyal for, for our president, the outgoing president, for two terms. I mean, Trump was mid-term, so he was feeling like he wasn't given the last four years. But this one, you have done 10 years, I think it will just be the right thing to do. And send the right message. If we are talking of bringing the country together, the reconciliation, I would even expect Raila Odinga to actually just congratulate him. I know it is not easy, but it will send the right message. And I also hope that the president-elect realizes also that he is representing every Kenyan, including the ones that didn't vote for him. Mm. Yeah. Honorable Mbui. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, I don't hold brief for the president, but I, I thought there and was I don't know, Martha, if you're waiting for his congratulatory message as well. I think oh. the... Honor <laughs> oh, You don't put... You don't, she, you're not she, putting... She him. didn't send me one and I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> he already did <laughs> yesterday. He agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, 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 I think the, the, the president and the president-elect, I think, had a conversation. I saw it somewhere in the media. So, and I think I'm certain in that conversation, they must have talked about the election and uh, he must have congratulated him. But everything is, has its time. He will have uh, an opportunity and he told us in uh, Masai Lodge that he's going to hand over the batons and the, and the instruments of power comfortably as uh, per his constitutional mandate. And he said he will be smiling. So that's already... <laughs> that's a not a that, congratulation. Uh, that, that already means he's happy. <laughs> and he, he'll be there, you'll see him on Tuesday very happy doing his work and handing over. Now, I think the, 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 the president-elect has a big job of uniting this country. He has uh, his work cut out for him. And uh, I, I, would ask, I would urge that uh, he allows democracy to thrive because uh, even as he takes over reins of power, he has to also have those that are checking him from the other side. Let him allow us to be where we are. Let him allow us to be able to oversight and be able to... You see, the, you, know, you know, opposition is not, um, op opposition is not an enemy of government. No. Uh, our work is just to point out the things. There are some things that we might see that maybe uh, his, his, his people will not tell him. So it's important to allow the, you know, democracy to thrive, the opposition to also do its bit. After all, we believe we are government in waiting. We are certain uh, sooner rather than later we will have an opportunity to take over that office. So he's got it for five years. We, we, are, we, are, we are looking for 2027. But in the meantime, let him allow us to be able to, you know, to ensure that uh, whatever mandate that... Uh, that we have uh, is carried out. The, the other issue is uh, when it comes to form his uh, cabinet, um, there is the issue of uh, the, 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 the regional balance that uh, was, was not very well uh, captured by the previous regime that it, it served in. Uh, because we saw a lot of CSs coming from specific parts of this country. I think it's a, it's a high time that we spread now our wings and ensure that the whole country, because I mean most of the country is, uh, if, you, if you have to paint the country properly, you notice majority of the country is uh, blue. Uh, but so we want to, even those blue areas. We want have that years. nine counties. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers are a moving target with, with politicians. Yeah, well, I've, I've realized, I've realized that. counties, <laughs> more than 25%. Honorable Mbui, in that meeting at Masai Lodge, a part of it happened away from the glare of the camera. What sense did you get of how Azimio will operate, the roles that um, His Excellency, the outgoing president, will play, the role that Raila Odinga will play, the role that Martha Karua will play? What sense did you get of, of their role without any sort of uh, formal elective office, except, of course, for uh, the outgoing president, who will now have the role of a, of a former president, uh, but also of the Azimio chair uh, moving forward? I mean, let me tell you, Aiga, I think one of the biggest uh, tragedies is we missed an opportunity with BBI to introduce an office of the leader of opposition. Because then that would have been a constitutional office that would be outside parliament. Because look at it this way. These two people compete against each other. One becomes president and takes over the reins of power. 
the one who loses should now become the opposition leader. Officially. But, but it's not, there's no official opposition leader. Actually, what happens is that in, in, in the assembly, we have now a majority and a minority side. But the people within the assembly are subject to their leaders. The party leaders are outside parliament. So I think we missed an opportunity to introduce an office like that. Because then we would have a leader of opposition that would be outside the house. But uh, having said that, I think the, 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 the leaders of Azimio are going to hold together and uh, hold the government to account. Because that's, that's the only job we have now. It's either you win government or you check government. You know. So now we are going to check government. And they're going to do it together. But uh, I don't know. I think, uh, the, 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 uh, you know, having served as president for two terms uh, might be a very difficult job for him to come back and start checking what is happening. So the most likely thing he'll do is that he'll retire fact, honorably. We are confused. He'll retire honorably and allow us to continue doing this job and uh, checking. So he did not him. indicate sort of what role he wants to play moving forward. You uh, got the sense he, he's he, retiring he, honorably he, and, and going okay, home. Uh, the, what he said is that he's, he, he's a Kenyan. He said, I'll be, I'll be a Kenyan, a citizen of this country, like every one of you. And so In I'll fact, be around and I'll, I'll, I'll play whatever role I can as a citizen. So he didn't indicate any, any position of leadership. He said he respects his leader. He's in Azimio. Uh, Laumoja, one, one Kenya, and he said that his leader is Raila Molo Odinga because Raila is a, is a leader of the, he was our candidate for the presidency. So that is all he said, that he will be a citizen, but his leader is, but his president is, 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 uh, is, is uh, William Samoy Ruto. But his leader, his party leader, is now Raila. That's what he told us. Mathau so he plays. Yeah. Did we miss a chance not not uh, entrenching within the law the position of a leader of official opposition? It will be an interesting conversation. And I think, but even now, we, we still will have opposition or what you call the minority to check the government. And that I say because at the end of the day, even the PG, the parliamentary group uh, meetings that Azimio will do, will always most likely be under Raila Odinga and maybe the president, outgoing president, because that is a bit confusing to us. In fact, when we saw him in Masai Lodge, we are not sure now as Azimio or outgoing president. So we are a bit confused about that. But I hope at the end of the day, because serving in the highest office in this land, Wahiga, is quite a privilege, really. It is quite a privilege. And when, when we hear him saying, my leader is Raila Odinga, for me, it sounds like the same when Raila was swearing himself in as a people's president in the last dispensation. So I really hope we can close ranks and realize that uh, we have the respect in this country. In fact, we even have constitutional entitlements for any outgoing or former president. That is not even debatable. We passed it in parliament. It is something that is in law. But I think the issue of uh, an official leader of, or opposition leader is interesting to look at. And I think it is one issue we can have during this. Uh, du during this. But I think even without being that, he's a de facto, really, as it is. Because even these uh, troops in parliament vote according to what or follow what they have been told by the same person, even without, without an official position. So, and I think there's a book that I read somewhere that says leader with no title because at the end of the day, elections will be, will be, will be actually be competitive. So it's never easy to say that you just move on or you just go on. But I think uh, the former dispensation had a very interesting issue that you could run for president and if you don't become president, you can become a member of parliament. Mm. So it, it, it is a very dis different thing that we are dealing with right now under this constitution. I think that is what uh, Honor Bumbo is trying to say that maybe we should think in the future to have it ent uh, entrenched because anyone is a potential leader of opposition. I mean, as long as you run for, for office, you can be on the other side. And I think it has happened even now and we have seen it happen. Honorable Robert Mbui, what next for Kalonzo Musioka? What next for Wiper Party? Well, Wiper Party is in Azimio, and we are, we are looking forward to 2027. In the meantime, we'll do our job because we've been uh, sent to the opposition by the votes of the Kenyans. So we will do our job there. We'll make sure we check this government. We will remind them that they told us that uh, food prices will come down. So even if it doesn't rain, they'll have to explain to us how are they going to do it. <laughs> so we'll have a very interesting time in the next five years. But we'll do our job and make sure we do that in a respectful manner. Mm. Uh, maybe I would like to add that, uh, you know, Kenya has become a country where there's a lot of insults against each other. We throw to, we, 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 we forget that uh, we are each, but we, we, are, we, are, we are one nation. True. And we are one family, and 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 so it doesn't really matter. Or it does matter that uh, my, my my party leader wins or my party wins, 
but it is not a matter of life and death. If we don't win, we can live to fight another day. In the meantime, let us respect those that are in office. And those that are in office, let them also respect those of us that didn't manage. So there's a, and you go to social media and you look at the kind of things our young people are writing about leaders. I think we, we are losing the script. It, it's, it's a, we are creating a, a generation that, uh, you know, in, in the future would be almost unemployable because the minute you put a pen on paper and insult uh, Ruto and you insult Kalonzo, you insult Uru, you insult Raila, I mean, clearly, clearly we are losing it. And, and that is the kind of thing that uh, even Uru told us. We had to leave social media because there's too many insults from, uh, you know, strange characters. Maybe, maybe together we need to find a way of returning that, uh, that, 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 that bill we had passed. The, 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 on, on, on cybercrime. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people, people think, you know, interestingly, it's against the law to, 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 to lie about someone and call someone a thief. It's against the law. It's, li it's, it's libel. Yeah. But they do it every day on social media and somehow get away because this law that uh, we had passed of, uh, of, of, of cybercrime, because that is something online. It's somebody hasn't faced you and told you, hasn't written and sent you a letter. So we need to have the, some of these laws we looked at so that we can be able to instill discipline in our country. Going forward, we want to unite, but even as we unite and, 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 and compete uh, in, in logical manner, mm. we need to also ensure that the people that support us don't make us look like a country of insults. You know what happened? I, did, I think there was a survey that was done, and they found out that uh, the country that has uh, most cyber bullies, and those are the people who go on social media to insult leaders, is Kenya, in the whole world. And then the country that has the least cyber bullies in the world is Canada. And the only person in Canada who insults people is a Kenyan. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think I, just to agree, because <laughs> what we have and what we need in this country is just, I would say political, but also social hygiene, because sometimes it's not even as the leaders. But if there was one demonstration why you should not insult leaders was the handshake. Mm. Because people went around, you know, insulting Raila, then the people are supporting Uru. In fact, even our president that time was the one leading that <laughs> brigade. Then you end up working together and you have, you have to swallow your words. I think people must realize you have no business to insult a leader or not, not just a leader, even another person. Why are you doing that? I think we need to create that even us as politicians, also the media, you have to play your bit because you like the, you like those issues. They are the ones you bring yeah, on, this, <laughs> on these shows. People love watching, they're entertaining. West, but when, yeah. you're a, when you're a hygienic sure. person politically, <laughs> you take time you, to even get airtime in this so, in this media, in mainstream media. So if we can all play our role, mm. then we will play and plug to something that is something we can be proud of as a country. Just I, think, I think that's a good place to leave it. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, to both of my guests. Uh, we've had here in studio Honorable Martha Wangari, MP Gilgil, and Honorable Robert Mboy, MP Kadiani. is also the WIPA Organizing Secretary. Um, I didn't know that he was going to respond to the fact that on the campaign trail, the president-elect several times, the then candidate, yeah. alluded to there's always room in Kenya Kwanzaa for Kalonzo. Oh yeah, we, I don't know what happened. They withdrew again. I, 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 was, very, I was very clear, I said. You, you watermelon. Know, let, him, let him allow us. <laughs> you see now, now we've just talked very nicely. We, we finished very we well. We talked about clean <laughs> and hygienic politics. And she has forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? A watermelon is not an insult. <laughs> But How would you like it if I called you a pumpkin? <laughs> I don't mind. It's very healthy. <laughs> so you have not received any offers? The, um, you know, I think I think we'd like to play our role in the in the in the where we are, the space that uh, Kenyans put us in. It's, okay. it's a good space to occupy for five years. We will do our bit. Uh, but we we'll respect the government and uh, support the government agenda where we can. Okay. For purposes of making sure the country moves forward. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes. That, I think that's also another good place to leave it. Okay, let's, let's take that break. When we come back, there's a lot more we'll continue to update you on. We'll be telling you what's happening in the United Kingdom, even as the world continues to, uh, to mourn, to celebrate, to look at the legacy of the late Queen Elizabeth uh, the second, I uh, will also be taking you to uh, live pictures from the Ulinzi Sports Complex uh, shortly, where an elaborate military farewell ceremony is set to take place today for President Uhuru Kenyatta, outgoing president, outgoing commander in chief. So we'll be taking you there live as well. So keep it Citizen TV. But for now, we'll take a short break. <laughs>